April is National Autism Awareness Month. And according to the CDC, one in 36 children are on the spectrum, with notably higher rates amongst minority groups and profound autism being more common in girls than boys. But some people aren't even diagnosed until later in life. Our next guest has always been open about her story after being diagnosed as an adult, and her experience as a legislator has allowed for a different perspective in office. Joining me now is former New York State Assembly member Yu Yulene New. Yulene, it's so good to see you. Um, I obviously wanted to have you on to be able to have this conversation. I mean, talk to my viewers about the importance of using this month to highlight the experiences of people who have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. So I think that it's really important for us to know that, you know, neurodiversity is um, something that is very much coming into awareness now um, that lots of people think differently and that it's totally okay too. And I think that, um, you know, that's why it's so important to have this month to be able to really kind of think about, you know, consciously um, some of the things that, you know, people with different disabilities go through um, and folks who are uh, neurodiverse go through. So I think it's really important that we have this month to do that. And I really appreciate you actually putting it as a highlight. Sure, of course. And I, I was noticing this statistic, and I wanted to share it with our viewers, too, with you. The CDC is reporting as well that an estimated 5.5 million of American adults have been diagnosed with autism. You yourself were diagnosed at the age of 22. How has that later diagnosis impacted your life, if at all? I mean, I think that one of the biggest things was obviously, um, you know, seeing all of the things just kind of make more sense, right? Once I received my mm -hmm. diagnosis, I was actually relieved um, to understand why I thought a certain way, how things work with my own brain, and also, you know, some of the things that I um, liked about, you know, myself that were actually, um, you know, what people might see as part of being on the autism spectrum disorder. And, um, and I think that one of the things that I personally, um, you know, felt was important was to destigmatize, you know, and really be open with my story because a lot of times, you know, people have a stigma when it comes to um, being diagnosed with um, ASD. You know, there's one reason studies have shown that autism can go unnoticed in adults. It's because they're really good at masking it. And these studies have also shown yeah. that women in particular will work extra hard to hide their autistic traits. Did you also experience this as you were growing up? Well, I think that was part of why I wasn't diagnosed. I mean, that was also that's probably also part of the statistics, right? Um, the fact of the matter is, women and girls often tend to not be diagnosed due to the fact that they are better at social masking, um, which I think you know folks probably also um, should know that you know being forced to mask and being forced to um, socially mask and hide certain. Um, stimming behavior, et cetera, actually has been proven to cause depression and anxiety. And so I think that it's really important that folks are knowledgeable about some of those things. Yulene, you've also talked openly about how identifying as being neurodivergent means you've constantly had to carve out space for yourself and for others to have mm -hmm. a seat at the table. Tell the viewers how important it is for the disabled and neurodiverse communities to be a part of the legislative process. Well, I think that a lot of times when we're talking about certain disabilities, it's really easy to erase or certain um, people don't have to think about certain things because they have the privilege not to. Right. And that's why it's so important for folks with different perspectives and different um, lenses to be able to be representative in office, um, to be representative um, at the table. And this is the only way that we'll be able to have the kind of access that we deserve. You know, people don't really think about certain needs. For example, um, I mean, this is a lot more uh, blatant, right? For example, you know, mm -hmm. using sign language when you're having hearings, you know, using certain things that will help like the disability community to be able to also be a part of our governing process. And so, you know, this is something that I'm constantly talking about because it's so important for us. Um, different ways of, you know, thinking are also one of the things that really people don't realize um, actually have an impact. For example, also, um, if you are on certain medications for ADHD, for example, you would have an issue with, um, you know, trying to get pregnant, trying to, um, you have to get off certain 
uh, medications to be able to, you know, be able to get pregnant or, you know, go through IVF therapy or go through any of these things. People don't realize these things unless we talk about them. And these are also things that we have to make sure that um, people have access to in policy, right? Like people have to understand how to make sure that people have access to healthcare and policy, um, access to services and policy. And we have noticed that, you know, a lot of students are able to get certain care because they are um, yes. not diagnosed properly or um, they are diagnosed, um, you know, just specifically for care.